Believe it or not, the footsteps of God are all over the land of Israel. Welcome to the Bible's Greatest Mysteries from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we've gotten to see some of those footsteps in person mm. in Israel. And we're going to tell you after the entire interview later in the end of the show, we're going to tell you how you can go with us in 2022 or, frankly, any time in the future. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned on that. But in the meantime, oh, Tom yes. Horn, our weekly mystery once again, to investigate. Tom Tom um, Horn has given us an assignment, so let's see what he put in the big books. <laughs> uh, oh, this is, this is a fascinating one. This relates to something. I actually talked about this in my virtual presentation for Skywatch TV in 2020, the Defender Conference in 2020. I was looking at the history of supernatural events discovered or described in the Bible, mm -hmm. um, one of the, the mysterious megalithic structures that has only been discovered in Israel within the last 10 years is something that's actually submerged beneath the water of the Sea of Galilee, very close to the site where we get baptized. We go into the Jordan River to worship and to baptize people. What is that called? Beit Shan or something like that? Uh, Bet Yerah. Bet Yerah. That's yes. it. Bet Yira, which means temple or house of the moon god, mm -hmm. but just across, literally across the street is the site of Yardanit, which is yeah. the uh, baptismal site where we visited. If we just looked across the street, there's an ancient community there where the Hurrian people, Horites in the Bible, uh -huh. settled hundreds of years, almost a thousand years before Abraham walked the earth. But archaeologists in 2012 found a massive megalithic monument under about 30 feet of water. I see a note here that Derek has more on this on his iPad. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm not really sure why this Tom exactly Horn would school. know that, but uh, he knows everything. Yeah, well, this is not exactly old school, but... Um, this We're supposed to be going with paper on this I show. I know, I know. It doesn't quite fit the whole, you know, 221 B Baker you Street. We kids, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our electronic toys. <laughs> this monument as, uh, again, just discovered about 12 years, 10 years ago, by a team that was looking for the ancient course of the Jordan River, which used to exit the, uh, the Sea of Galilee north of that site called Bet Yerah. Mm -hmm. And this huge monument, it's a big pile of basalt rocks, which they estimate at about 60,000 tons of stone. Now, by comparison, the concentric rings at um, Gilgal Rephaim mm -hmm. are about 42,000 tons. Stonehenge is about 25,000 tons of stone. So here, 60,000 tons of stone piled up in a massive, uh, what, tumulus? We don't know. Almost a pyramid shape, but it's really right. not that the four sides or anything. Um, by the way, if you're not, if you can't tell, he's got it. He's got a little eye paint. Just hiding it behind <laughs> I think you're here. cute. I really do. I think you're just cute as a button. But, <laughs> but think of all the time. That when, when this was built, it was not underwater. No, no. And scholars, because it's been underwater for a very long time, uh, due to the tectonic activity there along that Jordan Rift, which sits right on a fault line. That's why the Sea of Galilee is there. It's uh, Basically, it's a big depression in the earth that filled with water from the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. This, at some point became submerged. It used to be probably on the shore. But the question is, what's it for? It's never been excavated because it was only found 10 years ago. So a team from Ariel University and Tel Aviv University, um, Dr. Michael Freakman, one of the lead investigators on this, who also excavated at Gilgal Rephaim, he's got a, in, a real interest in megalithic monuments, mm -hmm. especially in Israel, wants to do more work here to find out, they want to do ultrasound investigations on this massive underwater pyramid and find out if there's a central uh, chamber and if possible to get in and excavate and find out what's there. But he connects this to an ancient Amorite myth from the ancient kingdom of Ugarit, which was located in northern Syria on the Mediterranean coast, destroyed during the time of the judges, a myth called the, the Epic of Akkad. Akat was a young man whose father named Daniel was the, the king, or Danel, equivalent of Daniel. Yes, um, R different Daniel. Different Daniel, not the one in the, you know, that we know, but uh, it was a popular name back in, the, back in the day. Anyway, Akat was given a magic bow by one of the gods, and the warrior goddess, the war goddess Anat, wanted that bow. Well, Akat wouldn't give it up, and so uh, she had him killed, basically. 
She had him murdered. And so the father, Danel, goes out looking for his son, Akat, and the geographic clues, now bear in mind, this is in northern Syria, almost on the border of Turkey, but the geographic clues, according to Dr. Freakman, place the events of this epic right around the Sea of Galilee. He mentioned, in fact, one of them probably points to Bet Yara. And so that's why he believes that this massive, what could be a burial cairn of some sort, mm -hmm. this megalithic site bigger than Stonehenge, is possibly connected to this ancient epic. This is like an ancient murder mystery. Yes, yes, going back 3,500 years. And here's the thing that I found fascinating. When, why, when this story came up, I, I knew we had to talk about it. The epic of Akkad, in that story, the king Daniel says he's going to look for his son, and when he finds him, he will mourn for his son, and he will bury him in a tomb for the underworld gods. These underworld gods can only be a reference to the Rephaim, who were known to the Amorites of that period. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. finally, he says, I will bury him in a tomb at Kinneret. As which, we found during which is the name for the Galilee, the Sea of the Ga the Sea of Galilee, and as we discovered during our investigation for the book Veneration, there is a massive collection of dolmens, which are megalithic funerary monuments, clustered just north of the Sea of Galilee. So many that Israeli archaeologists say you cannot describe them as dolmen fields anymore because the, there's no boundary line as to when one ends and the other begins. In other words, it's a massive necropolis. Oh my so, goodness. Well, we, we, we're just going to have to go to Aaron and see what he has to do. Well, talk about this. What is he discussing this week? Well, we're talking about the footsteps of God. So oh, as long as we're right. talking about massive yes. megalithic structures in Israel, there's no better person to talk to than Aaron Lipkin. And our conversation with Aaron is next on The Bible's Greatest Mysteries. Call now and take advantage of Skywatch TV's biggest giveaway of the summer. The Zeitgeist Summer Exclusive includes Dr. Thomas Horn's eye-opening new book, Zeitgeist 2025, Countdown to the Secret Destiny of America, The Lost Prophecies of Qumran, and The Return of Old Saturn's Reign, along with a never-before-released six-part Zeitgeist 2025 companion DVD, the shocking full-length documentary, The Secret Destiny of America on DVD, the full-length movie, Belly of the Beast, The Ancient mystery that holds the secret of Antichrist's resurrection and return, and the entire six-disc Rise 2021 Defender Virtual Conference box set on DVD, a $245 value, now available for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. In the new book, Zeitgeist 2025, you will learn hidden secrets and forgotten prophecies surrounding the year 2025, how the current U.S. government is tied to America's occult destiny, lost prophecies from Qumran, forecasting 2025 as the final age of man, how America's capital city is laid out to actuate a rival of Antichrist, and why historians and intelligence agencies foresee a totalitarian world government by 2025. You'll also receive the Zeitgeist Companion DVD. This six-part eye-opening expose on DVD reveals the malevolent Orwellian trinity converging around the world, seeking to homogenize the freedom to speak and think in order to create nations of assimilated devotees who will embrace Antichrist. And and we're just getting started. This must-have collection also includes the breathtaking two-hour documentary, The Secret Destiny of America on DVD, featuring Dr. Thomas Horn as he reveals who the God on America's Great Seal and U.S. $1 bill really is, why 72 pentagrams in the Capitol Dome are used to control the ancient cosmo craters who rule the nations, the coming incarnation of Antichrist, and much, much more. But that's not all. For a very limited time, you'll also receive the complete ride 2021 Defender Virtual Conference box set on DVD. This six-disc collection is jam-packed with over 26 hours of mind-boggling revelations from world-renowned Bible teachers, archaeologists, and ancient language scholars on the prophetic events unfolding all around the world right now. Featuring unforgettable presentations from Dr. Thomas Horn, Dr. Judd Burton, Bishop Ron Webb, Dr. Aaron Judkins, Pastor Mark Biltz, Colonel David Giamona, Dr. Ken Johnson, and so many more. Plus, 
Plus, for the first time ever, free the full-length movie, Belly of the Beast, the ancient mystery that holds the secret of Antichrist's resurrection and return, on DVD, absolutely free. Sold separately, these items hold a shocking retail value of over $245. Yours now for a donation of only $35, plus shipping and handling while supplies last. So don't miss Skywatch TV's biggest giveaway of the summer, the Zeitgeist Summer Exclusive, available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Order now or call 1-844-750-4985. The Bible's Greatest Mysteries is part of Skywatch TV, a viewer-supported ministry. Follow us online at skywatchtv.com. Welcome back to The Bible's Greatest Mysteries. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining us again this week is the CEO of Lipkin Tours, the publisher of the books by the late archaeologist uh, Adam Zertal, who made some amazing discoveries in the Holy Land, and the producer of the Hidden Israel series of DVDs, Aaron Lipkin. Aaron, welcome back. Shalom, Derek. The, uh, the footsteps of God. This was uh, something we sort of just touched on last week in discussing Joshua's altar. Um, the perimeter fence around the altar site what is the significance of that, and then how does it relate to what uh, uh, Professor Zertal wrote in his book, The Footsteps of God? Let's take a step back, back for one second. Um, for many years, the archaeologists and the, the academic world stated that there is no evidence for the Israelite invasion into the land of Israel. Um, they specifically looked at the area of Jericho, which is in ba the book of Joshua, the place where the Israelites entered into the land to conquer uh, to conquer Jericho and, you know, just before camping in Gilgal. And archaeologists claim that there is no evidence for an invasion of, of, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people in that area. And again, Adam Zertal, an atheist, you know, non-believing uh, uh, ar archaeologist scientist, uh, decides to do a, an emergency survey of the Jordan Valley, an area north of Jericho that wasn't uh, really mapped or, or archaeologically surveyed. And they find an, a, a suddenly a, a, a hundreds of sites pop out out of nowhere in the early Iron Age that really there's no other explanation than an invasion from the east. So we have to understand that the context is uh, uh, the, the, the hundreds of settlements that were found by Zertal and his crew. Now these are all, si all, all sites that are really sheep goats. They're really these, these circles of stones that were, that were made for fences for sheep and goats. And around those, they built the tents. So the only thing that was left over after 3,000 years is uh, just the circles of stones. Uh, but but others, Adam Zertal also found other uh, oval-shaped structures they were much, much bigger. I mean, they were really monumental compared to these simple round stones that were built by that same mysterious civilization. Um, and some of these uh, oval-shaped structures looked like footprint structures. They looked like the, 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 the right footprint. And so at first, Adam Zertal didn't know what they were. Um, they, they just looked monumental. They looked like something that would, you would have to invest a lot of energy to build, to, to, to uh, plan it, so it really fits a certain shape. All these oval-shaped structures were, were, were stationed near, the, um, the, the near mountains with um, natural slopes that could serve as amphitheaters. Oh, okay. Now, you know, everybody thinks that the Greeks were the ones that uh, invented the, the theater, well, actually, it's the Israelites. Uh, so, <laughs> so you see that th these monumental oval-shaped footprint structures were stationed at places that could seat, uh, uh, you know, thousands of people watching what was going on, on in, the, in those footprint structures. So Adam Zertal started to understand that this is not, um, you know, just a simple sheep or goat cage or, or a fortress or... It, it, it was something else. It looked like something that was used, used for worshipping reasons. And so what, what, what does Adam Zertal do at this point after discovering Joshua's altar? He understands that he needs to look at Jewish sources. He needs to look at the Bible because the Bible is a valid historical document. And so he looks at the Bible and he, and he, and he looks for something that the Israelites are doing in the book of Joshua, the, the book of Judges, Samuel, that has something 
connected to worshiping, and he sees that the the Israelites convene in Gilgal, a, a, a place called Gilgal. Now, as someone who learned the Bible before meeting Adam Zertal, I thought that Gilgal was the name of a place near mm-hmm. Jericho. Mm-hmm. But when you read the Bible carefully, you see that there are at least three distinct places in the Bible where Gilgal in, is mentioned. And it's not in, in, in specifically in Jericho. There, there's one near, the, uh, near Elon Moreh, near the Oak of Moreh in Shechem. Mm. And there's one uh, on the border between Judah and Benjamin that are not Jericho. And so you understand that Gilgal is not the name of a place, but actually the name of a function. And so Adam Zertal uh, theorized that these footprint structures are Gilgal. And, you know, every scientist that has a theory has to prove it. Mm -hmm. And so Adam Zertal said, if these are indeed Gilgal, then there should be a Gilgal on the border between Benjamin and Judah that I haven't found yet. He orders satellite footage from that area. Hmm. And he, he observes it very, very carefully. And he finds the six footprint structure. And for him, that was proof that those are indeed the Gilgal structures. Now, wh- where is that one located? It's located actually uh, really close to where I live. I live in Ofra mm-hmm. in Samaria. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's close to the township of Rimonim, um, just south of Ofra in Samaria, really on the border between uh, Judah and Benjamin. And uh, when you read the Bible in the, in the book of Joshua, when they describe the, the border between Judah and Benjamin, they, they, they mention the name Gilgal that is in front of Maale Adumim. And that was the one that, that Adam Zertal uh, thought were, that, that that's what he's going to find. And indeed, indeed he found it. And so we've been excavating these sites uh, just in this past year, both the, the Gilgal at Rimonim and Gilgal at Argaman in the Jordan Valley. And you can see that, that these are sites that were built by the Israelites in the early Iron Age period. And the interesting thing is the, the shape why are the Israelites building these oval-shaped structures in the shape of a footprint? Right, that's the, that's the question. And again, Adam Zertal, you know, is, is, is theorizing. He doesn't know exactly why, but he's, he is looking at other cultures. And he sees that the, the Egyptians saw the, the footprint shape as something that was important. And the, the foot of, of Pharaoh was considered not just a physical foot, but also a, a, a foot of a ruler, of a king. And when you see the sandals of Tutankhamun, you see that on his sandals, there are pictures of the, 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 the bows that represent the nations of the world. And so would he, when he would tread on them, when he would uh, walk on these sandals, he would really uh, declare his governance, his conquests over those nations. And then when you look at the Bible, you see that... that Moses and Joshua are often, often mention the verse, wherever you will tread your foot will be yours. And so that idea of, of governance, of conquest, uh, speaking, mentioning the foot and the treading of the foot uh, was definitely a declaration of this is ours. And this began with uh, the, the, in the Jordan Valley, but the, the shape of the outer perimeter then around Joshua's altar is exactly. in that shape. Yes, Yes, and, and when you stand there, you see that there's really no reason for the Israelites to build the, the wall in that shape. It doesn't coincide with the geography. There is definitely, a, 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 the, the shape is the symbol. Uh, it has a meaning of, its, of itself. And, you know, one of the things that Adam Zertel said is, 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 is that, you know, now that you reflect on that, you know, how do you say in Hebrew pilgrimage? The word pilgrimage is aliyah laregel, which means going up to the foot. Now we hmm. use we use that term even today in Israel, but we never think why we're saying that. Why we're saying going up to the foot. And Adam Zertal says, well, now we understand why, because when the Israelites went to worship God in the feasts, the biblical feasts, they would go up to the foot, the place where they would worship, you know, just when they entered the land before Shiloh, before Jerusalem. 
And, uh, you know, many people ask me then, what about Jerusalem? I mean, is, uh, do, we, do we find any sign of a, of a footprint in Jerusalem? And so when Adam Zrotal would lecture about his discovery, he would finish by showing a, a picture of Jerusalem in the time of King David and King Solomon. Right, right. And you would see very clearly that the walls around Jerusalem were in the shape of a footprint. That's the thing that startled us as we put together our, our video of our tour in 2019. After seeing uh, Joshua's altar, and sadly because of time constraints, we could only drive past Argamon, but uh, I found an 1865 map of Jerusalem, a German cartographer had done it and showed the outlines of the old city of David. And it very clearly is in the shape of the sandals. So that would be the seventh of the footprints? Correct. No, unless there are maybe more that we don't know about. <laughs> uh, you know, Israel is, is such a, a land full of surprises. And uh, because, you know, we're talking about structures that were there for thousands of years, uh, many of them are still covered and are just waiting to be discovered. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really, this is the, the excitement that, that, we, that we experience in Israel on a weekly basis. I mean, you know, archaeologists are finding things every day um, that, that really change the picture, change the, the way we see things. And uh, in, uh, every discovery that's being made uh, really proves the veracity and the historicity of the Bible. What's really amazing is and when you think about this and step back a little further is that, uh, first of all, the, the footprint of Jerusalem was not fulfilled or not taken by Israel until David, 400 years after Joshua led Israel across the Jordan River. But Joshua didn't cross the Jordan River until 400 years after God tested Abraham on Mount Moriah. God signaled his intent that this would belong to the descendants of Abraham back in his day. And it was 800 years later when David finally took possession of that last footprint. Yeah, and you see that the, the, how the tradition goes on through the ages. And, and indeed, between Joshua and King David, there, there is uh, 400 years. And, but the, uh, the, uh, the importance of the shape of the foot, again, went on through the ages. Just like Joshua's altar, the way it was built, was moved on from the time of Joshua and Mount Sinai all the way down to the Second Temple period, as we discussed last week. So, you know, we definitely see how, how the Israelites are keeping those traditions, uh, you know, for, for generations. Uh, let, let me ask this just in a general sense. How is the archaeology, the work of Adam Zertal, and your work to bring it to uh, audiences both here and in Israel, how is it changing in Israel the perception of Israelis? To their own history. Well, unfortunately, many Israelis are so um, uh, preoccupied with their day-to-day -day work. Well, and, as most of us are, yes. And, and also, you have to understand something. You know, many people take it for granted that that they're, when they come, you know, with our tours, they come to Judea and Samaria. But many Israelis don't visit Judea and Samaria at all. They 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 think that these areas are are unsafe, and they're very safe. And we've we've brought you know, hundreds and thousands of tourists there uh, who, who went there and were so excited to visit Bethel and Shiloh. But many Israelis uh, avoid those areas, unfortunately, and therefore they avoid the, the, the knowledge and understanding of the importance of the biblical sites there. Uh, and so, you know, until today, when you say to the regular Israeli, you know, have you been to Joshua's altar? He will look at you with open eyes and don't, don't know, really know what you're talking about. Uh, so, you know, people that come to these sites are really blessed uh, to be able to do that. And uh, that's why it's so important for us to bring people there, not just uh, Christians from all over the world, but also Jews. And I can tell you that when I do bring groups of, of Jews fr from Israel to Joshua's altar, they just, they're so amazed. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I stand there and I, I, I talk about the archaeology and about the biblical verses and there's so much more to learn about the site and I'm just going to throw, you know, something, something interesting in there. Um, one of the things that are said by Joshua during the ceremony is that the people that attended that, si that, that ceremony were the men, the women, the elders, the sojourners, but also the native-born and that, that is a big question mark. I mean, all of these people that are here, shouldn't there be from, from Egypt? They, yes. you know, they came from Egypt. Who are the native born? And so you, you understand that, that 
in, in, in the land of Canaan, there were Israelites while most of the Israelites are in Egypt. And that's an interesting thing that we're, di that we're discovering now and researching, and I would love to share that with you one okay, day. Okay, well, yeah, that would be, that would be fascinating. Um, for people who are, more interested, uh, who are interested in learning more about the footsteps of God, you've got Adam Zertal's book, but also your Hidden Israel series of DVDs includes one on the, uh, the footsteps of God. Uh, where would people go to find those? So they should visit hiddenisrael.net. And we just came out with this new book, The Footsteps of God, that was written by Professor Adam Zertal. Very recommended, sheds a lot of light on the Bible and the biblical events, and I really recommend it. And we also have a Bible teaching, a DVD, about the footsteps of God. Fascinating stuff that these uh, monuments were left behind as a reminder of God's promise that wherever you place the sole of your foot, the land will belong to you. And I think it's fascinating that you find six of those, so far anyway, dated to the time of Joshua and the Israelites, but the seventh was when David took the city of the Jebusites almost eight, well, 400 years after Joshua yes, and the Jerusalem. Israelites. Yes, Jerusalem. Yes, yes. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. By the way, we have a book available. We don't, Aaron does, but we have a copy of it here if you want to yes. hold it up. You can get this book from AaronLipkin.com. Right. It's, well, it's at uh, HiddenIsrael.net oh, is the you. website. HiddenIsrael.net, and uh, you'll get a copy of the book there. Plus, he's got a whole DVD series called the Hidden Israel Series, where uh, Aaron's uh, fascination with drones <laughs> has been put to good use. Really high-end drones. But he Very shows nice some stuff. yes high quality footage of these uh, sites that you can only really perceive from the air because when you're looking at them from the ground it just looks like a bunch of rocks wow. but uh, when you see them from the air it's very clear what you're looking at. Well, you need to go with us to Israel in 2022 or whenever it is we're going. No matter what year it is, if we're going, you're going to find it at skywatchinisrael.com. You're going to see the itinerary there and you can sign up. Yeah. Our next scheduled date's March of 2022, March 20th through April 4th, but uh, again Again, we will always keep the latest tour information there, skywatchinisrael.com. Um, fascinating stuff because Israel, as they say, you can't dig a garden there without uncovering archaeology. And that's one of the reasons we are so fascinated with the work of the archaeologists who have dug the, uh, the story out of the ground because, it's, because it confirms the narrative that we read in the Bible, even the weird parts. I know. Well, according to this, we have more Aaron Lipkin next week, so... Join us again. Yes, this is the Bible's Greatest Mysteries from Skywatch TV.